Hello there everyone, I'm Mr. Mocha Lover, and thank you for joining me here in the AEIOU with the 1886 mod for Hearts of Iron 4. Now, uh, we're playing this mod because I was watching a certain Alex the Rambler play Spain, and I figured, you know what, we might as well give it the good old Rambler try here on my channel, but we have a focus talking about the King's Duty, in which there's no description, but it's only 30-day focus, which I do appreciate, and we have 100 political power, sign us up. Sign us up. So, as I said, uh, I was just watching Alex Rambler and he was playing this mod and he had some fun. It was a little difficult, but it was kind of fun overall. So, oh, we might as well try out and see what Spain has to offer for us. Now, I think Spain at the time of this recording has full content, so we'll see what happens. Even though I, the flag on the left side, uh, the portrait of here, I just want to shove this thing to the right, to the left side. On the left, go, to, go left. Why does the flag have to be like that? It's a nice flag, but... Ah. Anyways, the king's duty. A day in Felipe's life. Felipe never had been a lazy monarch. Instead, he chooses to wake up at 5 o'clock in the morning, and after a breakfast worthy of a king, he goes on to attend this matter's estate. Normally, these matters are nothing more than about minor nobles asking for favors or peasants begging for a job here or there on days when the flow of beggars are significantly small. He enjoys disguising himself as a poor peasant and going to church with the masses, but now he has no time to do any of those things as Felipe has begun demanding to meet more and more clerics and scholars from all over Spain and Europe. He has also received several envoys from the papal states and even begun taking Latin classes, a language not even the high nobility can speak fluently. In the afternoons, when almost everyone can accept the most necessary and trusted of his servants are gone, Felipe goes under the castle to one of the hidden rooms and spends many, many hours there, reading or at least trying to read ancient documents. Only God knows what's in his mind. And apparently, uh, what I think the premise of this mod, AEIOU 1886, is that what if the Industrial Revolution never happened? So obviously Ted Kaczynski is really happy about that, but like... We'll see what happens. Hidden National National Salvation Movement. Lose ability. Oh, you change your Catholic support. Reverse economy. Oh, backwards economy. We need to look at our national spirits. Economy stuff. This is not looking good, my friends. And Marcha? Rebellious moderates. Um, this seems like we gotta do this. Publish the Toledo Manifesto. The Central American Cake. Old colonies, new colonies. I want colonies. But, um... Reverse economy? That's only 40 days. Let's see. What, what do we have here? Uh, oh, Spanish... Inc oh, hold on. So, we, as El Spano, under Felipe VI, he's a zealot. More political power, less stability, better surrender limit, more reward support. Cool. If you'd like to read about that, please go right ahead. He's a radical radical monarch. A national spirit. Backwards economy. Oh, that's not good. We also have strong regional feros. Very cool. Very cool. And we have religious fanaticism. Nice. Nice. Oh, actually, we come over here too. Look at that. We have we're Roman Catholic. Okay, and we're part of the Holy. We're part of the Holy Roman Empire. Uh, I'll be honest. I'm not sure that's off the screen at all, so I don't know what's really going to happen. Imperial authority. Oh my goodness, this feels like EU4 now. Slightly more electors. We're not electors. What the heck? I don't like this. Okay. Well. Uh. Wait. Rudolph the Third is an elector. That is a thick Habsburg monarchy. Oh, you did my boys in Germany so dirty. And the French Charles the 11th here, huh? The moderate. Oh, well, that's cool for him. Encourage scientific pursuits. More research speed. That's not really worth it to lower stability. Praise moderation. Eh. Continue Spanish Inquisition with not selectively lose stability when selectively lose manpower. Additional funding for military services. You get 500 more manpower. Uh, I don't know. Do we have anything here? Political advisors? 150. Not bad. Reverse economy. Uh, oh, construction speed would be nice. Uh, let's wealthy bourgeois, bourgeois universities. Sure, why not? Let's see what happens. Do you have anyone here who can give us more PP? Oh, that's not bad. Joaquin uh, Lopez Puig Sever. I don't speak Spanish. My apologies. Oh, slightly more political power. Aurelian Orleano Revas. Oh, that's not too bad. He like babies. Lakota declare war on Louisiana. Okay. Felipe, uh, liberal dude, and innocent. Pauli. And also, it's 1886, so. Uh, cool. Uh, let's grab some research speed. And this is America. Disgusting, I know. Boost noble scholarships? Why not? Uh, with the Republic of New... Republic of New England? And there's Seminoles. Cool. They're about to get, probably get destroyed. Oh, wait. Republic of... Someone to clear world in Cherokee. Canada's looking kind of thick, though. Um, well, who's in... Who's faction? Well, there's a lot of native alliance. Ooh, the Mexican Empire is here, and we still own a lot of territories. We own this too. Look at, or kind of, the condominium of Yucatan. 
That's kind of cool. They're a puppet. Nice. Uh, we gotta definitely continue that. Boost noble scholarships. I guess we'll enjoy the payoff. Um, and get rid of that stuff right there. So we get 0 0.02 more political power, construction speed, and but we lose two percent more research speed. It's fine, whatever. It's okay. But Mexico, are you a puppet of us? Please tell me you are. Oh, you're not, Fernando. Why not? He's an aristocrat. Of course he is. Actually, how fast is this mod moving? Uh, it's moving pretty fast. This this mod reminds me of um. Oh, what's that one mod? That lags so hard, or doesn't lag so hard, but what the heck is wrong with Sweden? Why'd you take that off of them? Throttlelog? Um, I can't remember the name of it, but it's it's like this, set in the 1860s. Wow, Africa, that is a thick African nation. Or, Africa's not a nation, it's a continent. The United Kingdom of Portugal, Br Portugal, Brazil. Wait. <gasps> Whoa, look at them. It's huge, but that's a, that's a big Portugal, nice. Attract foreign personnel, improve quality of life, more population. Oh, you know what? Let's do that one first. No more stagnation, and then we'll go down the middle branch and see what happens with that. Uh, I do know, I think we do go into a war eventually with the... Ooh, commanders, thank you. Uh, cavalry. Oh, yeah. Leonardo. 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 Gabino. Gabino. Oh, we have... What type of template? Ten combat width. I don't know. We have to use melee equipment and guns, which is kind of weird. But then we have these just thick Spanish boys, and they're 40 combat width. So it's actually really nice. Oh, oh, wait, that's medium cavalry and... Oh, heavy cavalry. Okay. Infantry equipment, melee equipment. Okay, I'm making both. I'm not sure which one to use, so I made both. So, yeah. Reinforce it. Why not? All right, so we got enough PP. We have enough Spanish PP. So how do we use our Spanish PP? Do we want more political power? Can we go to... War economy already? You know, I want to get more PP, but... Okay. Sure, why not? Why not? Looking pretty good. Uh, the fourth... Something war? Wiener Beitung. Is this... Why are we... Why are, Flasso, why are we using the... One in Vienna? The Wiener? Beitung? Do you have an upgrade? Oh, uh, you're defensive. Um, recovery rate? Eh, that's not bad. Kind of wait for that stuff, though. Alright, let's go National Salvation. Movement. Movement. Blue stability. Change our Catholic support by... Th is there... How much support do we have? I can't click on it. Uh, oh, wow. There's a lot of factions here. Del Rey? Absolutists? Oh, you bet so. Can I click on you? Anything happen here? Occupied territories. The Great Ching. And Kingdom of Morocco. Oh, Morocco's down here, too. Well, not for long. Hopefully, we can get a lot of conquests. The Great Ching Empire is looking pretty nice. Ah, uh, Guangxu. Zhu. And somehow, I don't know why, but apparently, we own Hong Kong. Who are you? Unorganized Spanish Crusader Group. What? <clears throat> what? Oh, Spanish reaction to the market crash. There's always a crash in one of these total conversion mods, and that's great. Following the Swedish ivory market crash, the Spanish Ministry of Econ Economy and Foreign Relations has made a thorough research on what this particular unforeseen situation would mean to the Spanish people and its colonies. It didn't seem like that nothing much would come of it as the Spanish economy didn't partake into the trade that plagued the northern countries such as the English Republic. Now in bankruptcy, or the Swedes, whose biggest source of income is now basically worthless. The age of ivory was long dead, but these countries refused to switch to modern trading materials like iron and coal, which have the true ability to move the world, and now they're paying the price. For us, we will just have to look at some new trade partners. Well, that's what ivory does to you. Please don't kill off <clears throat> the elephants. Coerce nobility? Oh, more political power? Popular laws? Let's go coerce and nobility. Following their weeks of constant reunions and deliberation and a speech given outside of El Pardo, the royal Spanish castle Felipe VI has proudly announced the creation of the National Salvation Movement, a political religious system designed for poor and by clerics. The goal of the system is to grant more permission to the religious figureheads of towns, cities, and urban other urban domains, and slowly displace the nobility into a weaker position of which the strength and clerisy can take advantage. From purchasing their land to directly claim to take it in the name of God, why is the G and God lowercase? The possibilities of this movement slash law are almost endless. One thing is certain, though. The nobility isn't happy about it and doesn't seem like they'll be in the near future. With his new political move in communion with the high clergy, Felipe has made his distrust against the nobility very clear and visible for all, and it is plain as a pike staff that he is not going to tolerate any dissents. A step towards the Catholic Kingdom. Ah, oh, good. Very nice. Theorists, we're going to need some theorists. Oh, look at that. This actually gives me more stuff. Armor recruit of population. Harsh disciplinarian. More division tech intense. I like that a lot. You lose some population, but I want to attack the crap out of people. Uh, that stuff is okay, too. Also, we're, we're, we're a global power, right? We have no ships. I, I, don't under, I understand we have no planes, but ships. 
I thought we were playing in Spain here. Scientific pursuit, that's not worth it, like I said. And if we praise moderation, we lose stability. So, I think we're okay. How about popular laws? We love popular laws. 35 day focus, not too bad. How are we doing with the economy? We'll have another civilian factory built on November 6th. Not bad. Uh, we can just go and train. So, we can't make any divisions, so... And we can't edit any of these either, which... I'm not sure if I like that a lot, but it is what it is. We do have some horses here. <clears throat> and what are they actually using? These guys are using medium cavalry, which gives us... Oh, that, why is it yellow text? It's so hard to read. 5.5 kilometers per hour. Heavy ones will probably make you go a little slower, but it is what it is. After this, I think... Oh, the laws of 1886. Well, let's do the benefits, benefit religious teachings. Rejoice, ladies and gentlemen, for the king has signed a new set of laws that will improve all of your lives, claimed the royal newspaper El Real, in its principal page with its letters in bold. In reality, there are not many reasons to rejoice as a newly kingly law is called Popular. They deceive the masses and make them believe that their leaders propose them. They are no more than a few a new revision of the serfdom that has been ruling Spain for the past centuries in an attempt to appeal to the more moderate France or the liberals of Austria, and to avoid being internationally isolated, Felipe VI ordered the draft of these laws, which include such vague concepts as, for the people of Spain may have the right to leave their own settlements freely without having to fear the wrath of their past master, but should they want to do so, their leave must be either approved by the aforementioned master, or have someone to substitute their serfs' loss. It is very clear that not everyone is thrilled about this development. Hurrah? Hurrah. Oh, look at that. That is so cool. Wait, we can't change this? Uh, can we go to... Uh, this is all we have. Okay. Um, hey, we made the thing now. Nice, very nice. We're making a lot of equipment. Hopefully get a lot of artillery. The assassination of Calixo Menzib Zabalo. That's really, really hard to read. Could this signify things to come? Maybe. Dispersed industry is very nice. How about we grab some... It's 1870. Oh, yeah, we're really far behind, aren't we? Wow. We are quite far behind. Uh, research speed? Yeah. 227 days. Holy crud. And what is the land auction like for this mod? Superior firepower. Okay. Benefit religious teachings. Crush moderate or rebellious moderates. There will be no moderates here in our Spain. Spanish Inquisition. Do we get rid of that? Do we want to keep doing that? Benefit religious teachings. Oh, weekly stability goes up. We lose some research speed. Yeah. Okay, why not? How much PP do we get every day? 0.5? That's not a lot. All right. Look at all that stability. It's just shooting up, isn't it, Felipe? It's just shooting up. Cool. Descent peasantry. We lose even more stability. That doesn't sound very good. And mass, that might be really good to get more infantry. Can we claim the Catholic Kingdom of Spain. Proclamation of the Catholic... Oh, Catholicism gave support. A success for the Pope. Replace the religious fanaticism with religious xenophobia. Where do we have... Uh, um... Look at our subjects. The birth of the Crown Prince Carl. Constantinople. Let's see. Yucatan, Spanish East Indies, Spanish West Indies, Spanish Netherlands. Nice. Oh, yeah, we own this group up here, too. Oh, look at them. They're kind of hanging out. Ah, Felipe, you're over there, too. Wow. That's kind of cool. Um, I'm not sure where this is, but okay. So we lose political power. We get more population. We lose population. Get more stability. Lose some war uh, get Lose stability. Get more war support. Lose research speed, but trade you off. Oh, this is not good, then. Maybe we went too far. Praise moderation. Oh, current support for the Catholic faith is 96%, which means there's very high support for Catholicism. Oh. Expand the, ooh, expand the Inquisition into Morocco. Oh, yes, please. How do we do that? I, I want to do that. What is this? Threat to the establishment? Attempt at Felipe's life. Push the Toledo Manifesto. Also, I want to let you know this is on historical. Let's get some more research speed first. Um, but, so yeah, whatever historical entails, we're on it. So. And do we... I guess we already trained these guys up, huh? Yep, they're already regulars. Oh. Very nice. Praise moderation. Well, Okay. That doesn't seem too good, but we got slightly more population, which is good, right? Strong original ferros. Religious xenophobia. Nice. I do want to go down there, though. Uh, enact the Lex Exploitaria. Proclaim the Lex Christi. Christi. Uh, improve quality of life. We could use slightly more stability, can we? We can. Oh, the Brabantian question. Bring Tesla's engine north. Oh, we need some PP for this. The Brabantians are a rebellious group of people formed mostly by peasants and farmers. Their lands, however, are the most valuable of all the Spanish-held European territories and now with the invention of the steam engine. It's very possible that we can get some profit from the mutinous land and maybe even get them to calm down if their nationalists further. Lakota's revolt succeeds. The French colonies grow weaker. 
Nice! This is really sad that they're this big. The Republic of New England, I mean. Oh, boy. Oh, New England proper isn't even normally New England. Oh, that's, uh, that is disgusting. Uh, and Marcia, uh, I don't want to have an attempt on my life. No, Felipe, no. I want to do this one, though. This seems like a lot of fun. Research is going by okay, and we're almost done with getting to 15. Not bad. Oh, you're actually fighting these guys. Oh, look at that. Yeah, I'll take all those Native Americans. Yeah. Can I say that? Cool. Pittsburgh? Gomda? Oh, did you win? No. Erie? Nouvelle Bourgogne? Bourgogne? I don't know. I don't speak French. Oh, that's a nice hat. Crow? Oh, look at that. Shows as he goes. Atsadi. Kono. And a thick Mexican empire. Oh. Nice job, guys. Hope we get a core stuff here. That'd be oh, baby. That's a lot of resistance. Wow. Okay, and Masha? Well, there's threat to the establishment. Might as well, I guess. Uh, what else do we have? We got some PP. Bring Tesla's engine north. Does this hurt us? I don't know. Okay, the Tesla engine goes north. Using some of our funding, we've managed to buy several Tesla engines named after its creator, Nikola Tesla, which promises to revolutionize the way production is handled and its majesty and his immense intelligence proposed sending them to the land of the Brabantians in an attempt to get some profit from the wasteland. It is well known that the Flanders and Brabant region is not one of the most easy to cultivate and the people aren't helping much either, so perhaps giving them something else to worry about than revolting, we can fix both nationalism and the crippling poverty that looms over all of them. Of course, this will require the help of the locals or else all of our efforts will be in vain luckily for us spain always has an a, a us up its sleeves and that us is the same lack of unity among the populace itself with the peasants despising the nobility and vice versa along with the elitist rich bourgeois which are hated by everyone in the end there only one will win us to brabant brabant it goes the first steam powered farms okay the first farms you can have farms there wow look at them united provinces of the netherlands He's Creamer. That is, that's an unfortunate last name. I would, oh, the collapse of Central America. Yeah, I would not want my last name to be Creamer. But man, that sounds just, mmm, 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 mmm. State of Venezuela? Granadine uh, Confederation? That's kind of cool. Uh, I guess keep going, man. 1880s. Here we come. Let's get Marapa, because we're going to need a lot of stuff where we're headed. Because I want to beat the crap out of everyone we can. Can we get Sicily back? I hope we get Sicily back. That'd be kind of cool. Oh, praise moderation, no... Scientific discoveries? No. Marriage of Prince Enrique and Princess Blanche of Bourbon. The marriage between Enrique de Bourbon, nephew of Philippe VI of Spain, and Blanche, eldest daughter of Charles XI of France, has taken place in Pau. Enrique, a noted liberal, is a good friend of Charles and a notable rival of Philippe. His marriage to the Bourbon king's daughter is for the antagonizer king of Spain, who fears his nephew may use this attempt to usurp his throne. It is unknown whether Charles XI will push Enrique's claim to the throne and create an ally in Spain, a threat to the establishment. I want more stability. That's looking not too good right now, man. Um, for 75 political power, I kind of want to wait. Ooh, chaos in Central America. Look at this. Now what? Okay, let's see what happens. Plans based on our military. It's just been a few days since the last of the newly created nations, El Salvador, declared its independence from the ruinous state of Central America. Now, with the situation under relative calm, and Guatemalans completely overwhelmed by the past events, and absolutely unable to pose a real threat, our chance at greatness has finally appeared. Of course, taking direct actions against the new realms wouldn't be seen with, would be seen with very bad eyes in Vienna and Paris, whose leaders don't appreciate us too much to begin with, so we must contempt ourselves with re-establishing our rightful economic ties there. Should we face any resistance in negotiating with any of the countries, we will be sure to use more convincing methods, rifle methods, for Spanish prosperity. Oh, we can negotiate. I'm glad I didn't click on this stuff. Steam-powered stuff. Negotiate with Los, Los Altos? Well, let's do that one first, just because we're right there next to him, so... Ooh. Can I send my guys down here? Can I just beat the crap out of them? Let's give it a few days, and then attempt at our life. Uh, pu publishing the, the manifesto. A terrible news comes from the capital. Apparently, someone has attempted to assassinate the king. We still don't know who the sus suspect was, and there will be no way to know, at least from his part, for he has been killed by the rabble before the king's guard could catch him. It was well past 12 o'clock when Felipe was walking down Quinoa Street, a quiet small street with which once held a female prison long gone. He was being followed by many peasants as he was not hiding his identity, but there's no fear at the time, as he was being protected by ten of his finest personal guardsmen. Then something caught his eye. On one of the balconies, a man began shouting to get the king's attention. He claimed to be the Christ envoy and claimed that something bad was going to happen to Felipe for his sins. Obviously, Felipe ordered the detention of the crazy shouting man, and half of his guards left to assault the house. 
It was at this moment that one of the peasants were, that were surrounding Philippe took out a knife and attempted to strike into the king's chest. Luckily, one of the guardsmen was quick enough to throw this king aside and halt the impact. As the soldiers rushed to get Philippe up from the ground, the peasants gathered around the frustrated murderer and beat him to death. The shouting man has not been caught yet. All ends well. Oh, good. Beat him up to death. Okay, I'll, I'll tell us, I kind of want to wait for these guys to get over there first, so uh, give them some time. They're going to need it. Hopefully this many divisions. It's only 13, but hopefully we do well with them. Um, higher line infantry? We need more army XP. Oh, we can just create new divisions. We're probably going to need that, actually. So going down here is probably going to be a really good thing. I don't know how strong these guys are, but I hope we can do well at the first farms. It seems that we've succeeded in introducing the Tesla engine to the Brambantians. They were quickly got to work with it, and the best local minds came up with an idea to mechanize the grain production. It is still too early, and the invention is absolutely rudimentary, but some claim that the grain production of the month has boosted, uh, has boosted tw by 25%. We can't be sure if this is true or not, but it's definitely good news. The use of these new machines have surely gotten the attention of the richest people of the zone. We have now expressed their intention of buying some of themselves to further the profit of this godly invention. We should expect some of their envoys to arrive in our court soon to discuss the purchase. One thing is clear, though, we won't let them go cheaply. If they want our products, they better pay good. Very nice. Oh, this is going to cost more. Revolutionize the cities. Ready to come negotiate? Um, uh, I don't want to do that one. Uh, we need more peepee, -pee, man. We need more peepee. -pee. Research speed is very nice. I just want to beat some people up, man. How much should we get every day? Point to A. Oh my goodness. The Toledo Manifesto. In a recent speech by the in the city of Toledo, King Philip II proclaimed once again the need of expansion to avoid the stagnation of the kingdom. Spain needs to rule others, not because of hatred or religion, but because of our suffering economy. It is in these times of need when the people must show their value and search for better lands while improving the ones we already have and make our ancestors proud. Fear not, however, as this expansion may not come as a bloody one, nor will it be by threats of force, for the lands once ruled by the Spanish Empire shall become Spanish again by themselves. Having countries under our economic sphere is not enough, for we must take what is rightfully ours and make our own use out of it, in the times of old when the sun never set in the Empire. This speech has been nicknamed the Toledo Manifesto because of its political significance. King Felipe was almost forced to give it to justify the Spanish interest and interference in troubled countries in America, especially the crumbling nations of Central America, whose ruinous state will be useful to the increased Spanish ambitions. This speech has been met with different reactions all across the Spanish-speaking countries. Calixico Menzabal, president of Central America, has quickly commendated the speech, and the Grandandine president has called it a threat to the establishment. The rest of the world remains silent upon the news. Oh, look at that. For a new future... In a new land. Puerto Barrios State. Puerto Barrios. Barrios. Oh! This is ours now, please. Uh, negotiate. Send in the negotiator. Old colonies. Oh. He's not dead. Focus on the true enemy. Oh, that'd be really nice. This stuff looks like good benefits. Keep him out. Rally the Portuguese. Okay. Economical Carabinho. Not bad. Safe routes, cool. Safe borders. The other spice route. Resurgent national pride looks pretty good. I do want to get maybe this, maybe. Proclaim the Lexi Christie. Oh, it's going to hurt. Oh, which one? The Lexi Christie. Enact the Lex Expatriatoria? I don't know which one to do. I'm going to go with the Central American cake. I like cake. And that's why we go down this way. I'll get this one next. All right, come on. We negotiated with you. Now die. Or come under us. Don't make me go to war and teach you and beat you myself. Oh, there goes France. Um, the Im impact of the collapse. It seems that the King Felipe's words were extremely prophetic because not much time after his speech in Toledo, Calixico Menzabal, president of Central America and the only person capable of keeping the state alive, has been assassinated and now the entire realm is falling into chaos and dismembering itself into smaller and weaker states. It is, of course, Spain's obligation to reassert its dominance in the region to deny the Mexicans any option of expansion, which they are surely trying to achieve in the Chiapas and Tapachula regions, the most pro-Mexican ones uh, of the fallen Central American state. Now it's time to return. It's time for Felipe to take a break from national matters and zealous rays and to look outside like a hunter that looks for its prey. Calling it a mission to restore the order of the region on behalf of the Spanish interests will surely justify Spanish imperialism in the zone and keep the Austrians, French, and Mexicans out of our way. Almost there. Uh, I don't mind doing this one just because we, we have quite a bit of Catholic support anyways, right? So, I think we'll be okay. We're at 96%, so that's not too bad. I want to do all this stuff, but... One, uh, negotiations, please. Negotiations. I'm I, I'm just going to kill you off in Guatemala. 
Like, I, I just want... Wait, we don't get a... Oh, we... oh no, this is... What? Oh, no. Stay to Guatemala. We have claims on you. But we don't get the extra claim thing. What the heck? Keep... Uh, this is probably a big old drain to keep doing that, but whatever. How are we doing? Pretty good. The pirates raid our ships. The pirates from what is known as the Pirate Coast are back at it again, hidden in their small region and protected by treacherous nations like those of Persia and the Ottoman Empire. The pirates often raid our boats and ships whose crew most of the time is formed by peaceful travelers and merchants who can't defend themselves. The pirates have sold our ships and kill all the passengers just to get some gold and the spices, which are very expensive and they know that. Perhaps the time we unite under a single banner and send a punitive campaign against those savages. Oh, what the garbage! The Alexi Christie. The Alexi Christie, as the name suggests, is a law that enacts godlike powers to the monarch even further than common absolutism. Following the events of the Quinoz of Street, Felipe has decided to follow the path that eventually leads to paranoia. After making sure that everyone involved with the failed assassins were executed quickly, reformed, uh, he reformed the 1886 laws, published just a few months prior, so that it also covered the king's domains. It seems that King Felipe took the commoner's threat about God's wrath extremely seriously, and now wants to secure his position with Alex Christie. In his semi-unfounded apprehension, King Felipe now controls everyone's lives, from the palace to the entirety of the region of Madrid, and most of the nobility has been subject to harsh inspections and uh, routine, r routinary, 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 I can't speak. This does not mean, however, that the commoners have been left unharmed. Far from it, as it was a mere peasant one, peasant the one who tempted at Felipe's life. The Inquisition is more active than ever, knocking on the population's house, homes before dragging them out and publicly deriding them most of the time without trial or proof. All these unfortunate events have truly aggravated the situation, with most of the population being against King Felipe and wishing to to put his son Francisco in power instead of him, whom they see as a rational figurehead. Nobody questions the king. No, 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 no. Let's just go and claim the Catholic Kingdom of Spain. I just can't, can I beat you up, man? I thought we were supposed to have negotiations. Oh, we've been lied to. We've been bam bamboozled. Africa is really nice. I like this Africa. Catholicism losing support. Religious fanaticism. We get more political power, which is nice. Uh, this goes down a little bit more, which is you know it is what it is. But a point four seven. That's better than it was before. That is a thick Polish Lithuanian Commonwealth. Germany. Germany, come back to us, baby. Bourgeois well support decentralized economy. Königsberg, led by Hermann von Sachsen Weimar. Yeah, that's huge. Oh. Brandenburg, looking kind of sprawly. Franz Josef von Stein. Karl Alexander, Marcus Walker. Christian the Ninth. Charles Dyke. Mary the Third. Wait. Wait. Scotland owns... Wait, is this Scotland? What the heck, Scotland? Why do you own that? And you guys are what, Protestant? That is the thick middle part of the banner. But, proclaim the Catholic Kingdom? Well, we'll do that after we do Circulical Economical Carabinio. Albrechtias is a patetas. Today is a glorious day for the Kingdom of Spain as King Philippe VI has finally revealed his plans and that all he has been working on the past months. According to his own speech, Philippe's intentions of this new realm, which is merely a self-imposed title with the permit of the Pope, is to oppose Kaiser Rudolf's viewpoint of the new Holy Roman Empire. This new Holy Roman Empire of his would of his would one more be one more independent from the Papal States and more united than the previous one, which with hated Rudolf at its top. Uh, something Philippe cannot allow. With this declaration, the Pope officially turns his back against Rudolf and looks with kind eyes towards Felipe's zealous ambitions. Nothing changes for the Spanish populace's lives as they keep their previous laws. Their previous masters and their previous precarious conditions, no matter what, today is tr a, truly a day to celebrate God's achievements on earth and Felipe's achievements on God's soil. Now, we can only wait and see how far Felipe's ambitions can go and simply hope that, that they won't result in war with the near future. Ooh, war? Yeah, I do want to see what if we can do more of this stuff here. I want to do all this stuff, actually. There you go. It's going to cost... Oh, that costs a lot. Holy crap. I want to see what we can do with the low countries, though. I want to develop them. What is, who's in the middle here? Why you cut my lines off? Gain support? Oh, uh, that hurts our political power. I don't want to touch that yet. Why did we get more support? The Prince Bishopric of Liege. Pierre Lambert Goussens. Oh, Lucy Goosey. Superior communications. Very nice. Is there a religious map mode we can see? That'd be really cool if there was one. Uh, maybe we'll start doing some... We're going to go superior firepower. Yeah, just in case. It's tried and true, and it's kind of necessary just in case, because we don't know what's going to happen. No noble economic pro priority. The Brabantian nobility rejoiced after hearing the news of the edict. They came directly from Madrid. 
Should they be able to get their hands on a Tesla engine, it would become personally theirs, and the Spanish central government would not be able to expropriate their local gains. Apart from that, all the production will be permitted to be resold at their own accorded prizes and not by the ones guided by the guildmasters in the cities. In fact, all the production achieved using this new method goes to the nobles' pockets and not to the main estate. There are taxes, of course, but they're extremely reduced for now. Many sorts have wondered what the Spanish government was thinking when this ultra-absolutist measures were implemented because now, they have not seen an inch of the prosperity gained by the Tesla engines. In the highest spheres, however, there's only positive feelings regarding these achievements and advancements, as the inversion made by the government a few months ago when they decided to buy the engines has been completely repaid, and now the Bantian serfs' attention has been distracted from their nationalistic fervor, and instead has turned in an interest of abolishing the nobility while maintaining good relations with the central government of the metropolis. There are no downsides at all. Nope. None. Nice. We get more political power back. Good, 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 good. I want to negotiate with the Central Americans. You belong to us. Or can I beat up some Monte Montenegrins? No. Can I beat up some Moroccans? Please, please, please. Oh, look. Improve the road system. Sure, you can have some roads. Why are we investing in all of these guys? Oh, 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 okay. We can take this. I need to save my PP now. And we go straight to war with them. Oh, I want to go to war. I want to go to war. How, how, how thick are these guys? Noble funded banks. We have no idea. We don't have... No, they... Oh, Hassan, hello. You're looking kind of crazy. But let's go ahead and click on... Safe borders? Borders? The other... Uh, spice drop. Nice. 20 days. Pretty good. Following the officialization of our support towards the nobility of Brabant, both the small money funding is given to the peasants, they have created a banking system, a big banking system, in the region for everyone to use. This is supposedly to modernize or moderate the tax levels and to give some kind of benefit to the peasantry, but not many peasants have taken part in this new system, as they see it as a menace to their money and are against this new taxation system, even if it supports them lightly. In the end, they see it as a way to further enrich their pockets at their expense now that the Felipe's new laws have moder moderated the taxes. This will end in conflict. Oh! That's not good. My bad. I just click on buttons, man. Oh, oh, oh. I wanna, I wanna beat up you guys. I wanna beat someone up. Alright, boys. Trying to get too many half supply hurt us too badly down here. Man, you guys move fast. Zoom, 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 zoom. The Spanish army moves lightning fast. Alright, negotiate with El Salvador? No. Oh, we need 150? We need so much PP for this, my friends. So much PP. The other spice route? What if we waited until, like, until the end? Oh, nice. Oh, we're so close. Ah, oh, screw it. We'll just go ahead and do it. Research in national pride? Oh, get more political power, too. And stability. I love it. Oh, we have to wait. I just want to beat up some Moroccans, man. How's this looking? Yeah, the country's looking good. The rich come to negotiate. As we've always awaited, already awaited, the rich men of the Netherlands have finally sent their envoys down to Madrid. They wish to negotiate the purchase of several Tesla engines to improve their production rates, as they all got amazed after seeing the profits the local government and the peasants have gotten in the past few months. These rich men come from bourgeois families whose jobs range from rich blacksmiths to factory owners, places where a Tesla engine would surely improve this production. It is now our duty to decide whether to accept their money and allow comp competition to grow, or we can simply refuse and let a monopoly in the region. There may be unforeseen consequences if we refuse, however. Rich money is still money? A monopoly would grant us even more money? Ah, uh, no, rich money is still money. Ah, good. Go, go, go. Get. Oh, we have to wait a month? Oh, come on. There's always so many Roblox for me trying to beat up other people. Not bad, though. This is literally all we can build, so. I don't think anti-air is going to be super important in 1888 when there's not a lot of anti-air going around, so. I could be wrong. But let's grab some more encryption. Because we can. And maybe we'll improve our weaponry after this, too. Resurgent National Pride echoes the victory. Uh, but we'll read that once we get... Click on, may our enemies trouble. We get more attack, defense, and war support. Good. Many parties have erupted in all neighborhoods over the, of the capital over the last few days, and more are going to erupt in the next few weeks. The population, cheerful and full of joy for the king's victories in the Americas, celebrates them with beer and carousing, and has forgotten all the monarchic mistreatments that have been happening in the past few weeks. And the religious extremism seems like something from the years of the past, while the Inquisition's misdeeds are simply something that only happens to the ones who don't behave adequately. There's no place for bad thoughts. The new treaties King Felipe has signed mark the beginning of an economic miracle for the Spanish peoples, where the bourgeoisie and the nobility will be able to enrich themselves without having to clash with each other, and where the serfs and the peasants will be able to buy their freedom through, from their masters by paying a small teeth. The trading of goods through the Atlantic, thanks to the recently refounded Circulo Economico Carabinio, 
It was an impulse even bigger than the one the Castilian Kingdom received in the golden century of the Spanish Empire, and the beginnings of the 16th century. These advancements have been mainly political until now, with some small exceptions here and there that aren't really necessary to mention, and clearly mark the beginning of a new set of global operations with the intention of stopping the decay of the Spanish Empire in all the forms possible, especially in the military, which has seen better days since the Spanish Third. Uh, began being defeated towards the end of the 18th century. The subsequent years have been a constant downward spiral, which culminated in the defeat of, of the War of 53, and the loss of, of all colonies in America, with the exception of Jewel in the Caribbean, Cuba, and some of the minor islands in the region now. Having at least fixed half of that, and still having a lot to do, King Felipe VI will have to face the increasing demand of military action against bigger powers who might stand in her path for a new Spain. We shall go to Morocco and beat people up, and prove roads for the Netherlands. You're welcome, Netherlands. Sociedad Industrial Flamenco Española. Do we want to waste our peepee -pee on them? Yes, we do. Oh, stop importation of foreign imports. Is that good to do? I don't know if we should do that one. That doesn't seem very good. Go, go, go. Beat them up. Fun in the get mines. Unexpected news comes from the lands of the Brombantians. We truly did well allowing the rich to make their own Tesla engines as now the iron production has gone up to the sky. We've never seen so many iron products be marketed in such a quick pace which has allowed the rich owners to open a new set of mines, both here and the city of Ghent, which will serve as a union from the north to the south. The benefits of the Tesla engine have just started to reveal themselves. Praise the iron market. Nice. Okay, so seriously, I want to go to war with these guys. What is going on? This, this might be bugged. Oh. What happened down here? Los Altos. What the heck? Guatemala? Um. Oh, technically we can't even do El Salvador or Honduras. We don't even reach them. Guatemala, what are you doing? Severe economic ties. Um. Can I justify them? That's a lot of political power, though. Can we negotiate with I don't know Honduras? Okay, negotiations. We actually have something for negotiations here. Okay. Several of our renowned diplomats have been sent to the new nation of Honduras to attempt to bring reason to their leader and to ensure that the money flows accordingly. Our envoys bring gifts and anything necessary to bring the meeting up to a happy ending for both parties. In the first wave of demands, King Felipe has ordered special care and attention to detail and local traditions to avoid any and all possibilities of insulting them in any way, and has also demanded that should the envoys receive a no as an answer to no matter what they try, they must always act politely not to mention any threats at all as these will eventually come after they've left the country already. May they choose wisely. Okay, we'll see what happens. Un they reject our diplomats! It seems that the Honduran leaders refused the negotiation attempts made by our diplomats and our very reasonable offers and kind demands have been all in vain and turned down with spite. Having decided to simply stop listening to our envoys' positive advices and instead turning his back against our guests, the leaders ordered our diplomats to be kicked out of the country. Furthermore, the diplomats even claimed the Honduran high command has even dared to insult you personally, my lord. Claim the report written by one of the messengers right from the ship that transported the diplomats back home. The reality isn't that far from the truth, however, although the insults have been greatly exaggerated and it wasn't such an unfriendly visit as the diplomats wanting to make King Felipe believe. The Hondurans had managed to see through our laughs and good promises, and have surely noticed our not-so-good intentions. This hasn't avoided, however, King Felipe's anger. Send them an ultimatum. Oh, what? We don't have a navy, man. We literally don't even have a navy. Uh, they bow down. Our friendly, well-speaking diplomats may not have succeeded in their duty of bringing some sense into the Hondurans, but uh, the already known saying of guns and threats work better than kind words and gifts has proven once again effective as the Nicaraguans have finally accepted their inevitable fate. Not wanting to face our numerous army and our modern rifles, the president quickly ordered the reversal of the anti-Spanish measures enacted prior to the reception of the ultimatum and made sure to sheepishly bow down to our second round of envoys. This time, however, the new envoys sent by our government to negotiate won't be as kind and friendly as the previous ones, for now they aren't negotiating negotiating with equals but with a defeated country whose diplomatic capabilities have proven weak when prudent when put under pressure another victory for Spain nice can we abuse you no all oh, for the ruler oh growth of many factories okay that wasn't too bad um I want to take them out man El Salvador I guess you're next all right uh several of our renowned diplomats have been sent to the new nation of El Salvadorians uh, to attempt to bring reason to the leader and to ensure that the money flows accordingly I think that's the exact same thing, isn't it? May the shoes wisely? Okay, well, let's see what happens. How many men have we lost? Well, about 700 versus 2,000. That's not too bad. 2,300. Um, you guys have done a very good job. Unfortunately, we have to keep going, so. Abadalia? 
Negotiation successful. Great news, my lord. The diplomats we have sent found success in their important mission. They were received with good, extreme good manners by the local population and nobility, and the El Salvadorian leader offered to host the feast in your honor and health, my lord, which, of course, our diplomats humbly refused. It took both parts just a few days to negotiate a benevolent economic treaty that would benefit both nations and have accepted joining our sphere of influence with a smile. Claim the report sent from one of our couriers taken directly from the ship that transported the diplomats back home. It is true that the Spanish diplomats have been received with better manners than the ones expected by the diplomats themselves, but it also must be mentioned that they had a biased viewpoint of the natives, so to their surprise, was understandably big when they weren't as mistreated as expected. The El Salvadorian president was also far more tractable than what they expected, so when they attempted to downplay his country's economic ability, they were met with fierce opposition rather than simple submission. Having learned that their job wouldn't be a path of roses and once they began taking the natives seriously, then both parties were able to reach compromise. Someone covered the diplomats in gold. Wait, that's... Wait, what? That said Los Altos at the end there. Ah. Light economic ties. Yeah, they got... Hmm. Moderate economic ties. Okay. Well, Mayor, enemies tremble. And I'll do Dawn of a New Era. National focus you changes to reverse expectations. Let's do safe borders first. I'll get some more uh, war support. That's not stability. War support. War support. Oh, look at that. We lose army XP, but we get some division. Sure, we'll take another division. Why not? Oh, it takes 30 days. That's fine. Wow. I hope... Oh, bourgeois economic malversation. We knew it. We know those bourgeois pigs were up to no good. It just took some of them less than a month to start embezzling the taxes. Someone of some few had begun making the money coming from the newly opened Ghent mines disappear. We've already lost... Had losses of 60%. The local governor has opened an investigation along with the treasurer minister of His Majesty, but is uncertain if we'll ever find the culprit. This has been a hard blow to the credibility of the citizens, who now squabble against each other for the profits and blame their neighbors for stealing them while themselves steal too. Just pray this doesn't go to worse. Alright. Hey, Morocco, we love you, Morocco. We love you so much, we want you under us. Direct rule from Madrid. But back to Spain. Or Spain? Well, back to Spain, technically, yes, but to France. Um, do we have to release these guys? Ooh. Hopefully get enough compliance here. 0.4, 0.5, it goes going up a little bit. It'll take some time. But in time, they shall be okay with our rule. We could release them puppet. That might save us some... Oh, we're pretty good on equipment. Oh, actually. Huh. Safe borders, and we'll do safe routes. 25 days, not bad. We're building our economy up pretty nicely, I'd say. It's going to take a while to get something really humming and going, but that's okay. What are we missing? Hmm. What is that? Iron? Pirate trader ships. That's not good. Okay. Encryption. Uh, what about guns? Let's get 1880s musket. There you go. Hello? Wait. You can... Why'd you spawn all the way over here? Melee mercenaries. 20 combo with... And you're literally... Melee battalions. That doesn't seem very strong. But then again, these guys... Each one of these is not that strong either. So 4.6 versus 2.4. Oh, yeah, they're still not that strong. I'll take them. Safe routes? Cool. I guess all we have left is Dawn of a New Era. Cool. I think we did really well down here. Superior firepower? Marriage of, Cr of Crown Prince Francisco. Jolly news has come from Madrid. It seems that Crown Prince Francisco of Habsburg has married Princess Luis of Habsburg-Lorraine, daughter of Ferdinand IV, ruling leader of the Grand Duchy of Tuscany, currently 19 years old. Oh, she's expected to go eventually give birth to an heir once Francisco inherits the throne. According to the human interest newspaper El Cordial Saludo, Francisco and Luis met in one of King Felipe's many diplomatic missions to Tuscany, their biggest and only ally in the region. This mission probably happened three years prior, but has been kept secret until now. Crown Prince Francisco, known in the court as a charming, handsome young man whose physical appearance resembles more of his mother's lineage than from his father's. It is very easy to gaze why young Luis, just 16 years old at the time, fell in love at first sight unexpectedly. Francisco seemed to accept her presence as he is known for rejecting every woman, but noble or not, that is tempted to arrange a marriage. It is because of this that everyone in the court knows that the marriage will be a long-lasting one. Viva los novios. Ah, we got the PP back. Let me know in the comments below. Should we stop the importation of engines? Please let me know. Because I will do that early on. And we might continue with the Spanish Inquisition. Is that worth doing? Maybe it is. Maybe it's not. It probably is worth doing, right? It's probably worth it, right? How many divisions do these guys have? Charles IX. How are you doing? Oh, that's not good. What is that? Centralized Army. That's not too bad. But you... War, war support. No. Colonial Adventure seems like fun. Economic Revitalization. Nova Support Average. Nationalistic Breeding Ground. Ooh! it's a good time to attack then. And Decaying Military. Oh, I like that too. 
Guaranteeing the independence of Louisiana, huh? Well, I guess we'll have to wait and see with the new Don, our pan, pan has been sold. The greedy bourgeois merchants of Brabant have done it again. They didn't have enough to, with stealing our profits from the taxes that they're now sold the patent of our own version of the Tesla engine. Far more productive than the Austrian variant, must be said. To the Dutch, it's rumored that they've sold it for ten times the price it cost it us, too, but five of them. It's impressive how naive the Dutch are, but still, we did not allow them to sell our products to the enemy, even if it means huge profits. We don't know what the Dutch will do with it, but this can't be good. One thing is certain, however, we've lost our monopoly in the smithing sector and the mining in general. What the Brabant giveth, the Brabant taketh. Alright, I'm going to kill off the, our low countries now. we got to get rid of them. Alright, and Patria et Christus. But I guess that might end the episode here. If you enjoyed this episode, leave a like, subscribe if you're new, check out my Discord link in the description below, and I'll see you tomorrow as we discover what else a AEIOU 1886 mod has in store for Spain. Thanks for watching. Have a great rest of your day.